Yo, 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 yo. Welcome back to another episode of the 8 Morning 92 Podcast, where we always keep it 100. You heard none of them sound effects, did you? Nah. Hey. Oh, then how you coming, Glock? Pause. Okay. It's the 8 Morning 92 Podcast. Are you, you know how we do. We always yeah, keep it 100. Who, who, who? Yeah, yeah. You want to do yo 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 what's up everybody welcome back to another episode of the one and only eight one and ninety two podcast where we always keep it 100 with you i am your host harrison we are back 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 again with another episode yep yep Glad to be back. Hope everybody has been well. Everything has been good with me. Just working, moving along. Some of vacation, so that means I am on super daddy mode. Um, but everything has been good my way. I appreciate everybody that has been listening and asking. You know, we get a new episode. Shit, when I sit down and record it. But uh, other than that, uh, how has everybody been? A lot of stuff has been going on in the world. Uh, some people out there marketing on black people's pain and uh, finally getting freedom and making a mockery and milking every two seconds of it. Um, I seen the pop out concert. Only two things I'm going to say about that is uh, Kendrick Lamar. You are milking every dollar that you can get out of this pop out concert. Um, you got the win in the battle. I think Drake will win the war, but all in all, you know what I'm saying? You started off with euphoria you in with like that. Eat a dick nigga over you all day, but you know, Hey, people happy to see you rap. La, 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 la. Who cares? Uh, we can go ahead and get started. Uh, the draft came on this week, and this has been the closest I've ever seen to watching the movie Semi-Pro with Jackie Moon, Will Ferrell. Suck my cock! I'll murder your family! Andre 3000. Um, why don't you love me, sexy? Because who was a who in the fuck was all these people in the draft? A lot of things have been coming out for the draft, mainly just because Bronny James, LeBron James Jr. was in this draft. And a lot of the talk it had been about for him joining the draft. Was he an NBA caliber player? I can easily say hell the fuck yes, because I can't even tell you if any of these other motherfuckers are NBA caliber players, because I don't know who the fuck they are. Um, never seen any of them. This is the first time that if I would have seen any of the people get drafted, I would sit there and say, oh, hell no, bro. I can take I can take them like this. Is the first year I've watched the draft and felt like I could have went to the league if I just would have been a little bit more dedicated. If I wish I could have been a little bit taller. I wish I'd been a baller. This is a year that that song should have came out and they should have played it for the draft. Because this was the biggest name. This was the biggest crop of what the fuck is this? It's no way in the world for the NBA draft to go on that I could tell you more names of the people that got drafted in the WNBA draft. I can tell you the top three of the top 10 of the WNBA draft, Clay, Caitlin Clark, uh, Carmela Cardoza, and Angel Reese, one, three, and seven. Um, I can tell you uh, Caitlin Clark's teammate went to the Aces. I can tell you Cameron Brink went to the Sparks. I can tell you... Um, way more about the people that went to the WNBA than I could tell you who was drafted for the NBA. And the only person that was drafted by the NBA that I could tell you is Ronnie James in the second round who went to 55 to one and only the Lakers. But, you know, we kind of see this. And I mean, we said this, this is why the Caitlin Clark and the Angel Reese debate was so popular because who the fuck was these people up in college? Now, I will say this with Cooper, uh, Cooper Rush. I want to say is a Cooper Rush or Cooper Flag. Let me see. Hold on. Cooper Flag coming out next year. Let me see. Possible 2025 draft class. Because I actually know a couple of them names up there. And I'm actually going to watch it next year. So for your 2025 NBA draft, you have Cooper Flag, Nolan Traor, uh, Dylan Harper, Ace Bailey, VJ Edgecombe. Hugo Gonzo, Dink Pate, I'm trying to go Trey Johnson, JT Topping, Donnie Freeman. Yes, out of that, 
I knew at least five players coming into the first round of the NBA draft for next year. I can't tell you anybody. I know, I think somebody French went for the number one pick this year. So I can't tell you shit that was going through it. This is the best year for Bronny James to come through. I'm just going to be honest with you. Uh, we'll focus on that. But I just want to kind of sit there and say, look at our game today. You know, um, a lot of speculation been made because uh, we've a lot of people have been feeling like that the NBA had been going towards international play. A lot of us have um, seen Wimby and Luca and Jokic and Giannis and Shea Gilchrist Alexander take over, and we just asking ourselves where the American bread as superstars at. But in a easier sense, you know, I just want to ask America. What a niggas at, huh? You know what I'm saying? Is French taking over the NBA? Man, sit your dumb ass down. Get the fuck out of here with that dumb shit, nigga. What a niggas at? You know what I'm saying? You know, we would have really uh gritty that motherfucker out, you know, if Chopper Morant ain't decided to go to the league last year and start uh shooting people for not taking the ball back up top for 21. But, you know, we got Anthony Edwards, we got finally Jalen Brown, we got Kyrie, well, that's not good. Let's go under 25. We got Anthony Edwards. We have Trey Young. We have under 25. I was about to say some regular people. Mm. We have Jalen Brunson. You could throw Tatum in there. You can, you have to throw Tatum in there because he's one of the top players in the league. And... That's where we are for American. You know, niggas is Ja and Ant. Um, you got LaMelo in there, if he's ever healthy. Then you have Tyrese Halliburton. You have um, hmm, Austin Reeves. You have getting kind of thin there. So we have the American talent. It's just, you know, you got Luka, you got Jokic, you got Giannis, you got Embiid, you got um, Shea, you got Wimby. You got all these French people that are taking over just because we let the French catch up on. Well, really, some of these motherfuckers are tall ball handlers. All right. And my theory for this is you need to go back and get a dominating game like with Kenny Lofton Jr., I get it. The game has gone from the three point uh, angle and con I'm sorry, move to the three point line and taking away kind of what the big man is. But you need to go get size and put it on the front line. You know, I feel like when we watching these games, the reason why you seeing um, the reason why you seeing a lot of this stuff go down like this is because the because you see like all these French people, they ain't big like that. So it's easy for them to have a passive game. And that's why a lot of French people are succeeding. But, and then, you know, when we do get somebody in the NBA, you know, uh, we get niggas like Jared McCann. Jared McCann, as you can see from this video right here, I can't tell you who this motherfucker is. I can't tell you none of the highlights he's done. I can't even tell you if this motherfucker can shoot the basketball or this motherfucker can even inbound the basketball, drink Gatorade. But I can tell you this motherfucker has been on TikTok for doing everything but popping that pussy and doing everything. Uh, but scoring an actual basketball or making a basketball play. Now, at a certain point, I mean, the motherfucker came to the NBA draft dressed like Brittany Grinder. So this is the state of niggas that we in. I'm blaming black fathers. We need more T Morants out here. We need more. We need more black fathers. You know, I think when Kion gets in to the NBA um, and Bryce get in, you know, we'll have like a little bit of resurgence in that because that class is going to be elite. Um, I see a lot of up and coming kids in like the 2026, 2029 class and that one and done. But like I said, when Cooper Flag gets there, I'm probably going to watch Duke and I don't even care for um, college basketball at all. But I've watched Cooper Flag for a while. He's pretty nice. Um, Mikey Williams, you another one that just had to let the chopper spray. Us, you would have been all up out there. But, you know, I just think, you know, fathers, get back in your kids' lives because ain't no way in hell that Jared McCann's father could have been in his life with this nigga doing shit like this. Um, oh, this, my fault. But um, ain't no way in hell that you would have been up there embarrassing me 
on Jesus Devontae's green earth looking like this. Uh, but like I said, it was just a lackluster draft. So it's had more attention. Shout out to Jeff Teague and them on the big three. Uh, been watching that's been entertaining. Joe Johnson been cooking. Uh, I think they're coming up to DC. I think this weekend or well, was July 28th. Or if it wasn't this past week, it just came through. So hopefully I get to go to a big three game uh, and see it has gotten a lot better since it's, since his inception. Shout out to Angel Reese breaking the rookie record for 10 straight double doubles. Uh, she was, I want to say 19 and 10 today when they played the mystic and then, um, Caitlin Clark, they beat the first, uh, team over 500. They beat the mercury down to Tarasi, uh, didn't get too upset where didn't blow her kiss. And, you know, I think Brittany Griner was going to go out there and dunk it, but, um, she remember what league she was in. And also, she was about to go smack some players on the ass, but I don't think she want to pay child support for being a deadbeat father. So um, they did a good game there today. But, you know, let's get to the real purpose of this year's draft, the only intrigue that we had, and that is Bronny James getting drafted by the one and only Los Angeles Lakers. Let's give a round of applause to him. And not only LeBron James, LeBron James for making it 20 years, using your platform to get the coach you want and get the son on your team. Like, I don't think we notice like what type of flex that is that we don't hardly ever see in any type of professional business establishment. Never have we seen this type of flex by a black man. And the first and foremost, let's get it to LeBron. Um, I want people to pay attention when you are saying who you want to be like LeBron Ramon James should be at the top of everybody's list. He is a real life uncle Phil, a real life Carl Winslow, the real life Alan Matthews, the real life, uh, Mr. Belden, uh, anybody that you've seen that was like a father figure on TV. This nigga is actually it. Um, and I think that people should model themselves. I think you go 20 years in your career, not a scandal, not an allegation. You are with the woman that you've been with since high school. You have three beautiful kids and you play the game the right way. You've played 20 years at an elite level and then you are able to play with your children and make sure your children are set up for success. I think that whatever you want to call it, nepotism, whatever you want to be, what I don't give a fuck what you want to call it. I think that is the the recipe for a role model. And I don't think people really take that in consideration. What else the fuck else was he supposed to do? Um, you LeBron fucking James. Kenya Martin did that. Uh, Kenya Martin, son, plays in the league. Carmelo Anthony, son, plays in the league. Dwayne Wade couldn't get his son to play in the league. Uh, a lot of parents who are athletes try to get their sons to play in their respective sport. Gilbert Arena's son is pretty nice right now, real nice. His daughter is nice, uh, and they're getting them to play. But LeBron is doing something impressive. And he's still playing in the league, averaging the same amount of points he averaged when Bronny was a baby. To be able to take court with your son has to be something that pushed him. I don't think he cared about the having the six red, six rings or beating Michael Jordan. I think he wanted to make sure that he kept himself able enough to play with his children. And I think when you have stuff like that, I think you need to go ahead and get that type of commitment on the back. And, you know, um, I want to say the cool, you know, the, the, the everlasting preacher that finesse two times is, it's cool when they do it. When I do it, no. Um, I don't see any problems when you have coaches hire their children on their staff when they make a professional team. I don't see when, I mean, Jeannie Buss inherited the Lakers from Dr. Buss, and it you can have your own interpretation of how you feel that she's done with the team. I mean, he set them up for success. Uh, Amy Adams Strunk is Bud Adams' daughter from the Tennessee Titans. She owns that team. You didn't see him like, no, nah, I'm dead. You need to go do something else. Um, you see this in businesses all the time, practices where they have a family, business, law, grocery store, whatever it is, and they pass it to the children, usually a fair 
complexion. What about LeBron hasn't seen said that what he's doing, if it is nepotism, if we want to go that route, has he not earned it? 40,000 points, 15,000 rebounds, 10,000 assists, or 10,000, 10,000, whatever the exact stat is. Has he not? He's never cheated the game. He has four championships. He's done it with three different teams. He's obligated. He's fulfilled and obligated. He's fulfilled the obligations to all the teams that he's been on since he's been in the league. He's never asked for a trade. He's never demanded his way out of town. He's never done any of that. He's done all everything what he he's want. He's done everything that was in his contract to do, and he wants to play with his son. And you can look at the landscape of the NBA. I mean, when LeBron and them leave, I mean, look at the viewership for this finals. It was boring. Nobody wants to watch that shit with LeBron and Steph Curry gone, KD not in it, uh, Giannis not in it. Well, you can throw Giannis ass off, but really just the top dogs that you grew up with that you've been watching since we were getting and going to college or just getting out of college. And like that era is about to be gone. You got to really be a fan. Like Dame Little is aging out to James Harden, Russell Westbrook. Like these people are aging out, you know. You got to really be a fan of these bookers and these shades and all these people to kind of really kind of keep invested in the game because we're at that point now where either you were always a fan of, like my parents always a fan of the Pistons or like myself, always a fan of the Titans because Derrick Henry is gone. Derrick Henry is like my favorite running back of all time. Um, and it took a while to get to that spot. But now that Derrick is gone, I'm not going to abandon the Titans. I mean, I root for the Ravens, but it's Titans first and then Derrick second. But you know, um, they're phasing out. So if somebody who's done everything the right way, he didn't retire like Mike did. He didn't do anything. He's won a championship at every location he's been to. I think he's owed that. I want to know what the standard for black people are when you are successful. Can you only make success and do it the way that you see white people do it? If you go through some type of heartache i mean shit when diddy and all these people are doing it look at all look at everybody else that has a name for themselves right now that's black what they've gone through even kevin hart as good as he is how many scandals kevin hart he ain't been clean and nothing martin he's had his scandals will smith just got back in the public eye for slapping the shit out of chris rock you don't hear nothing about lebron and it's probably already chaotic to go through the life that he has and plus on top of that you got to take this into consideration. Bronny had a heart attack last year. He probably couldn't see. He probably didn't think he would have a chance to play with his son ever or see his son. So it had this opportunity. Like, let's call it for what it is. Um, And now let's switch it to Bronny. Like, Bronny may not have been. Um, yeah, Bronny James, I'll, I'll say this about you. You worked your ass off. You do. You know, you what a lot of people don't understand is you probably had one of the hardest feats to go through. And now it's being LeBron James Jr., which a lot of people will never understand. I mean, me being a junior, I understand what it's like being a legacy and namesake. But nobody will ever understand the pressures you had to go through as a junior. And the most I can think of somebody ever saying about you is you had a blunt, which I don't know if it was true or not. I seen the video, but of course, you know, you can't always trust everything you see on video. Um, but you to be the kid that you are and to have the pressure that you had on you since you were young. Nothing but respect and not commend it now. So, you know, enjoy this. Don't let nobody take it. It's already going to be hard enough for you to forge a legacy with somebody who set the bar so high. But the bar wasn't as high as you think to be LeBron James, be LeBron James Jr. So you got into the NBA. You set your own bar. That nigga Bryce, though, you got to compete with him. I don't give a fuck what nobody say. Your competition is Bryce. Not your daddy, not none of that. Bryce, because that nigga is going to be real. And, you know, the one thing I do notice from all this is kind of like, what is the households like at the LeBron James households now with this? You see, you see, um... All this going on, and it's like, how do you do a loss now? You know what I'm saying? You know, uh, you know, if you, you you eating dinner and it's time to pass a roll, and Savannah's like, "Hey, Bronny, can you pass your dad a roll?" And then does Bron go, 
Oh, you could pass that shit, huh? But you couldn't pass that goddamn ball on the court when it's five fucking seconds left. Fuck out of here, nigga! All right, all right. What the fuck wrong with you, boy? I don't know, like, how does that go? Like, how do y'all have y'all first disgruntlements then being around your pops, seeing like the level of guy he is and the expert expectation of perfection is probably going to be overwhelming at first because it's not going to seem like it's good enough because he's going to want you to do what he's seen you do all your life. He, you're different from other people. He knows exactly what you do because he trained you. And then LeBron is going to be the same thing because it's your child. You just can't talk to him crazy, but you got to kind of be realistic. You know, you do you take this kind of season off or do you really enjoy it to play with your son? So it'll be an interesting season. I just think that people really need to kind of step back and just shut the fuck up sometime. I think if everybody, and I'm speaking African-American, if you had a chance to, let's just say if you was in a lawn care business, Line care business is global. Everybody uses your line care services to cut their grass, shred they uh, uh pull their weeds out, um, shred they um shrubbery, whatever it is, uh, trim their shrubbery. You will use it. So why the fuck wouldn't you get your own kids there? I don't see why people are acting like this form of nepotism is a problem. And I don't even call it nepotism. I mean it's a it's a benefit. Like help them out. Help me help you. You know, I see people like Idris Elba say, I make my daughter go to auditions and stuff like I don't get her to ends. That's different. He ain't got no production company. Tyler Perry be a little different because you can always put Tyler Perry. You can always put your kids in a Tyler Perry production. But Idris Elba isn't the director. He isn't the one that's making the movies or the studio sign off on the budget of money. So she still has to be able to know if it's your daughter, you're either going to be too hard on her or too soft on her. So it's like, you she's not going to get a fair shake because she needs to go out there and feel rejection. So, but this with the Lakers, you know, I mean, if you want LeBron James, LeBron James, LeBron James, LeBron James, LeBron James, you better get Bronny James, Bronny James, Bronny James, Bronny James. So, I mean, I don't see any real problem with it. Um, I just, yeah, like I said, I just, I just don't, I don't see, I don't, I just want to know what people like expect. Like, what do you, what would you do? You know, if this was you in the driver's seat of a franchise, I think Bill Callahan works with Bob, Cal Bill Callahan is a Titans head coach. And his dad is an offensive coordinator. And he didn't, they stayed away from each other, but they ended up bringing them in. You want to work with family, but sometimes you can't always work with family. And I think this will also be good for Bryce if LeBron can stay in the league long enough for Bryce to see if you can play with your children, if your children want to play with you. Because you being around your kids at home as dad is different from you being a co worker. And they'll see that. But also at the same time, bro, we about to lose Brian. Why don't we just enjoy shit for what it is? Why are we sitting there nitpicking everything and people want to just shit on everything every two fucking seconds? Shut the fuck up. Also, uh, I'll leave it on this one. Everybody always got something to say about Jonathan Majors and Megan Good Relationship, whatever it is. However that nigga look on camera, this nigga was said to be Kane the Conqueror. A white woman went on there and lied on him and cost him his whole fucking career. I see people always sitting up there comments saying that he don't like her shine and he don't like this. And I see those are just those farm bad at shit to get user interactions. When are we going to get to that point of where we don't feed negativity and we're realistic or what the fuck we say? Um, I think that people are too caught up on and excuse how this looks, but too caught up on what happens on the phones and stuff to where we don't step away and look at how real life is. Um, it is hard sometimes to kind of sit there and see what happens in real life because everything happens on the phone and to your screen. Um, if you catch something happen at the right time, I mean, shit, you don't even have to really be at home to watch TV. You can watch the presidential debate at your at on the toilet. So, I mean, I just feel like in a reality to where Trump and Biden are only two president candidates is which is fucking embarrassing. I just feel like every day seems like another episode of the movie Little Nikki where hell was coming on earth. And it just seems like the negative side of seeing a life of so much freedom and so much privilege and so much uh, free will 
go on from everybody is just kind of tearing the fabric of morality down and the expectations of people are no longer realistic and it's kind of disheartening but you know it also teaches us a lesson that the people that do get it and you are you do have younger kids see what happens when you finally got the th- when you finally got in the driver's seat from your parents and you complain about all the stuff that you did or didn't happen to you and then you raise some little motherfuckers and you see what happened when they got into the driver's seat and then thankfully if you were young enough you were able to um have more and you see okay well this probably wasn't it you kind of see where like the good and the bad and the give and take and shit was so you know um use that i say that to say um everybody thinks that they had it hard and when they say it when I, if I ever got a chance to do this, if I was ever in charge, if I was ever in the driver's seat, if I was ever done this, take a second to sit back and realize that like, not everything is as easy as people make it seem or power or whatever. It's stressful. You're always under surveillance. You always have to make the right decision. Sometimes you have to make it in a split decision. And what you do affects millions, hundreds of thousands, however many people's lives. And you're the one who has to live with the decisions and the consequences of your decisions and people have to trust that you have the best interest art. So I say that to say is when we're constantly tearing people down, we're constantly giving our own personal opinions. Like, um, I think I seen one that said a broke man who a rich man who don't spend his money and a broke man are basically the same person. And we see that and it gets a thousand likes or it gets whatever. And is just tearing somebody down because they don't want to spend money. And then you look at it. Who is a nigga who says it? What's your finances like? You know what I'm saying? Well, no, if I just had it, no, you wouldn't. You know, it's the same people that want to sit there and say, I would take, a, let's just say, a most $200 dinner and get some advice, but still don't have the money to maybe go through with the advice from a Jay-Z or Rick Ross or Bill Gates or whatever. Or I would not take... I'm sorry, I would rather take that than the 500000 or a million dollars without the advice, have the money to kind of maybe learn it on my own, and I could give the advice to a nigga on my own, and I don't have to sit with Jay-Z or whatever because I already got money myself, and I've already have the groundwork, and I've already trialed and error myself, you know? But if I take a $200 business, I mean, dinner with Jay-Z, the dinner was just free. I'm still broke as fuck when I leave the dinner, you know, but every nigga want to be a fucking philosopher. And I guess I'm just kind of like at that point where like, I don't know. I'm, I'm like when this wave of attention needy people, I think one chick is like, just had sex with, she's a security guard or prison guard, just had sex with an inmate and they record it. The fact that everybody got to feel like they record stuff. When we pass that wave, of everybody having a freedom of speech and open mic shit, I think we'll be, when we get more restrictions, as bad as that sounds, I think we'll be in a better place. And I think the sanity can come back into people. Once since we've all took stage and running the show for a little bit and realized that our parents and their parents and whoever wasn't as hell strong, been never just cared about blah, 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 blah. And we've had and seen that we ain't too much better. Um, we'll all be able to kind of sit back and look at each other and understand where we're all coming from. So, um, I just went on that small little rant. Um, but I will end it there and say y'all niggas who entered the draft should be ashamed of y'all fucking selves. Okay. Uh, what's his name? Jared McCain. You are fucking embarrassing. I never say, I always say I would never go to a game and throw some at an NBA player, but I'm liable to lose all of my, um, experience and get banned from the, the band i want to wells fargo center where the sixers play it for the rest of my fucking life to throw a full gatorade bottle with rocks and piss at you on the floor just because all you have done since i've seen you is tiktok videos and they're not even the manly ones they just like like pop k-pop ass shit like you are embarrassing this is what happens when you in this will happen when you breed with mixed races all right 
Put some nigga to nigga babies together. Put some baby to baby's kids out here, okay? Get you some fucking, get you, I'd rather take an Urkel at this point, all right? Get you some fucking bruh man for the fifth flow aspect. S- 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 go back to, actually, you know what? Fuck this. I feel like this may be happening when you do have fathers in your life. Fathers, get out of these kids' lives again. Give them a fucking reason to cry. Teachers, go back to telling the kids they ain't going to be shit. And the people that got the hot tour girls fired because y'all can't seem to like let shit go. I hope she sues at school and y'all need to just relax. Other than that, this has been another great episode. Uh, I don't know if people have noticed the IG page and the TikTok page is down. Let's just keep it to recording. I'm going to just keep it simple and straight as that. If you want to do anything with the show, um, not really feeling like the whole interview vibe. If you want to just come on here and shoot the shit with the topics, we can definitely do that. If you got anything to promote, we can definitely do that while the show is going on. Not really feeling the mood for the interviews, but we can discuss all that in the emails. You can send it to me at the more than eight. I'm sorry at the eight more than 92 podcast at gmail.com or you can shoot me a text if you got the number but the ig page and the instagram page uh i'm sorry instagram page and tiktok page are shut down let's just focus on recording let's just focus on getting y'all the content out all the other stuff is an unnecessary stuff i just want to be in front of uh the microphone recording making y'all laugh and putting out videos and audios for all the people that's been riding with me that deserve to hear from it so other than that i'm gonna holler at y'all later peace damn mind. Well, that's what they said about George Washington Carver and his peanut. But your asses are still eating skippy. Yo, 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 yo. Welcome back to another episode of the 8 Morning 92 podcast where we always keep it 100. You heard none of them sound effects, did you? Nah. Hey. Hey. Oh, then how you coming, Glock? Pause. Okay. It's the 8 Morning 92 podcast. Are you, being you know how we do. We always keep it 100. Welcome back. Who, who, who? Yeah, yeah. <laughs>